What's happening, Hardscapers? Today, I want to get into seven commonly overlooked retaining wall installation mistakes that lead to failure. Let's get into this. Now, previously, we did this with interlocking concrete pavement installation mistakes that go commonly overlooked. And we're going to draw on that and expand a little bit more because there are some similarities between these two installations of interlocking concrete pavement and retaining wall structures. And most importantly, this has to do with the base. And we talked about excavation and having the right aggregate and the right base depth. But also with retaining walls, we need to make sure that we have an extension beyond the toe of the wall and in behind the wall. You should have a minimum base extension of six inches in front of the wall, as well as a minimum of 12 inches behind the wall. From the face of the wall to the back of the drainage area should actually be 24 inches. So in some cases, you actually may be looking at more than those 12 inches in behind the wall for that base. This allows for more than enough room for that wall unit to sit without being displaced over time. We also talked about compaction, and compaction is just as important with a retaining wall structure, both with the base as well as the backfill area. And because a lot of these different commonly overlooked mistakes with retaining wall structures mesh into one another, we'll be covering this many, many times, but compaction is one thing that is incredibly important with the base preparation all the way up the backfilled area. Ensure that you have proper compaction equipment for your project. This generally means a reversible plate compactor that has enough force to be able to work in lifts depending on the force that that compactor is able to apply. And a rule of thumb is 1,000 pounds of force for every one inch of material it's compacting. Poor compaction over time will lead to unevenness in the courses, causing your wall to look like waves from course to course. However, this could be done just from the installation not being proper with ensuring that your initial layer, your initial course is level and each subsequent course is also level. Continuing along with the backfill material in behind a wall, this actually is the cause of many failures that I see and this is usually because the wall is leaning forward and this is because the water the hydrostatic pressure in behind that wall is causing pressure to build up and push that wall forward because there's no drainage material typical drainage material in behind the wall is a three-quarter clear stone angular crushed and this has minimal fines in it for water to move through the system and down and into a drainage pipe, which we'll be getting into very shortly here. But that backfill material is incredibly important. And we talked about that minimum 12 inches in behind the wall for the base that should also carry up the wall for that drainage material and maybe even more depending on engineered drawings. Improper drainage in behind the wall can cause the wall to push forward, but also it could leave efflorescence deposits on the surface, on the face of the wall. And this looks incredibly unsightly and it needs to be acid washed to be cleaned off. This is because efflorescence is caused by moisture. Because the presence of moisture in behind that wall, that moisture will wick its way through the face of the wall, bringing with it and dissolving mineral deposits on the face of the wall. Continuing along with that backfill, we're gonna talk about the drainage pipe as well well because this is commonly overlooked and that drainage pipe should be perforated for water that builds up in the system to be captured by the drainage pipe and moved out of the system or sometimes even through the face of that retaining wall. If you're using three quarter inch angular crushed stone for the entire base as well as the backfill material, that drainage pipe should actually be placed lower in that system. However, if you're using a three quarter inch minus for the base material and a gravel, something like that, that is three quarter inch angular crush down to fines in it and you're going to be using a three quarter inch clear stone for the backfilled material you'll want some sort of non-woven geotextile to separate those two and then that drainage pipe can be placed in that backfilled material as opposed to lower in the system into the base embedment is another crucial part of this whole system and you need to have a minimum of six inches embedded below the final grade and this could increase depending on a lot of different factors including the height the slope beyond the wall and the surcharge that is actually placed on top of the wall. We actually don't even have an embedded layer underneath this. So this, you can see actually the base, the A gravel here washing out through this corner. We've got our embedded course there and I'd be interested to know if there's another embedded course below this because with this high of a wall, I would hope there would be. But here in this corner, in such a crucial area, we've got no embedment and we're getting that wash out of the base 
which will lead to eventual failure of at least this corner, if not further up the retaining wall. It's always important that if you're going over a certain height, depending on your local codes, that you do have an engineer create this drawing for you that you can then follow. Which brings us to staggering the wall units. Many times I do see a DIY project where wall units are just stacked in one single line. The stagger is what gives the retaining wall strength acts as a single unit, a single mass, withstanding the surcharge that is placed on that wall. Without that stagger, you're missing a lot of strength from withholding that surcharge that's placed on the wall. Segmental retaining walls are designed to have that stagger a minimum of a third of a unit from one to the next. And then finally, height. And height encompasses a lot of different aspects. The height of your wall depends if you're gonna need some engineered drawings or if you can follow the manufacturer's specifications for that specific product. It also depends what kind of products you can actually use to build that wall because not every product should be built for a retaining wall. Retaining wall products without mechanical clips or without some sort of clipping system built into the unit should only be built to a certain height, which is usually not that high. As your height increases, so too should the weight of each segmental retaining wall unit in that system. A setback can be placed on that wall or a batter, which is where each unit from one course to the next is set back at a specified angle, typically already built into the segmental retaining wall unit. This helps withstand the force that is applied from behind the wall, that surcharge. Additionally, a geogrid can be used to also stabilize the material in that backfill area, preventing any further pressure placed on the back of that retaining wall or that surcharge load. The construction of retaining walls get really technical and these seven things should not go overlooked and many, many others, but these are the most common things that I do see in a retaining wall construction. That definitely doesn't mean that's the only things and if you have specified engineered drawings for your retaining wall, those do need to be followed. Luckily, manufacturers typically have some sort of specified drawings and the heights to which their wall units can actually be built to. However, with larger static and dynamic loads that are placed placed on the wall or with steeper slopes beyond the wall, this may require engineered drawings to be able to construct that wall. It's better to be safe than sorry, especially with retaining wall structures. And if you wanna learn more about retaining wall construction, we do have a members only platform for how to hardscape with a two hour course in there on retaining wall construction that goes through everything in depth that we've already talked about in this video, as well as many other aspects from start to finish for a retaining wall build. If this video has helped you in any way, please give it a like, comment below any questions that you have, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.